Okay, welcome back to our video series on ischemic stroke. And this is the second video in this series, and we're going to look at some of the anatomy that's important to know here. So first, let's label the pieces of the brain that I've drawn here. And we know that this portion here is called the cortex. And then this, all of this down here is called the brain stem, but specifically there are three pieces to it. There's the midbrain, the pons, and the medulla oblongata. And then together these three form the brain stem. And then the final piece is this portion here in the back that I've drawn blue, and that's the cerebellum. And that those are our, our three main pieces. So let's look at what happens when you get a stroke in each one of these pieces. So first, the cortex. So a stroke in the cerebral cortex is going to lead to numbness and weakness on the opposite side of the body from the stroke. So on the contralateral side. So here I wrote contra to represent that. So a stroke in the cerebral cortex leads to contralateral weakness and numbness. Now, what happens if you get a stroke in the brainstem? By the time you've gotten there, all the pathways that I've since forgotten, but I do know that the ones that go to the face have already crossed. So what you're going to get is symptoms in the face that are on the same side of the stroke, but symptoms in the body that are on the opposite side. So you're going to have these crossed uh, deficits. So if this poor unfortunate fellow were to have a stroke on the right side of his brainstem, he would have symptoms in the face on the right side, but on the body on the left side. So you would see these crossed deficits, right, on one, the face on one side and the body on the other. And one other thing that I'll mention for the brainstem, that is for pontine strokes, probably usually pontine hemorrhages, you're going to see pinpoint pupils. The patient will probably be comatose. And finally, for strokes in the cerebellum, which is responsible for movement and balance, you're going to see some pretty vague symptoms like nausea and vomiting, ataxia and vertigo. They'll probably also develop a headache as well, so you've got to really be sus suspecting a cerebellar stroke and go look for it in order to catch it. So here we looked at different stroke syndromes based on where they might be in the brain. But we could subdivide this cortex a little bit more uh, in the more detail by blood vessels as well. And that brings us to our old friend, the Circle of Willis. And if you'll humor me, I'm going to build up the Circle of Willis the way that I like to think of it because I always, I always thought it was a fairly confusing structure, but it really isn't when you look at it in this way. And so what I've drawn here really are the big blood vessels that make up the circle of Willis. And uh, let's start by labeling them. And so these two up here, these are the anterior cerebral arteries. And then uh, this one here, and its corresponding one over here, these are the middle cerebral. And these are also for uh, uh, referred to as the ACA and the MCA. So of course then this one back here is going to be the posterior cerebral. So these arteries right here, this is called the anterior circulation, and these back here are the posterior circulation. So where does this blood supply come from? The anterior circulation comes from the internal carotid artery, which I'm just going to draw as these two little stumps here in order to try to keep the picture somewhat simple. So the anterior circulation gets its blood supply from the internal carotid artery, and the posterior circulation gets it from the paired vertebral arteries here which then join together to form the basilar artery. So in orange I've drawn here how the posterior circulation, the anterior circulation, where they get their blood supply from. Now in order to make this a circle everything needs to connect and they do through communicating arteries. So the anterior circulation connects there through the anterior communicating artery. And the posterior circulation connects to the anterior circulation through the posterior communicating arteries. And to complete the picture, let's throw in the cerebellar blood supply. First, there's a superior cerebellar artery. 
And you know, if there's a superior cerebellar, there's going to be an inferior cerebellar. And there are, of course, two of those. So there's the anterior portion and the posterior portion. So you'll have a posterior inferior cerebellar artery, or the PICA, P-I-C-A, and the anterior inferior cerebra, uh, cerebellar artery. And again, just to be complete, I'm going to throw in two more, which we'll talk about later, but these are the ophthalmic branches, so the ophthalmic artery. So it really doesn't look like a circle, I guess, other than everything connects, but this is our circle of Willis. And so now let's look at this as where, what, would, what would you see on your patient if one of these were occluded? So for an anterior uh, cerebral artery occlusion, if this were to get blocked, you would have symptoms in the leg, mostly in the lower extremity. You'd have some in the arm and face, but mostly in the leg. So you could guess what's going to happen if you have a blockage of the middle cerebral you are going to have symptoms mostly in the arm and the face, and maybe a little bit in the leg, but mostly the arm and the face. Now the posterior cerebral goes mainly to the occipital lobe and the medial temporal lobe. So you're going to have some problems with hearing, balance, vision, that sort of thing. And we already talked about what happens when you when you take out the cerebellar arteries, you get the nausea, vomiting, ataxia, and vertigo. But for the sake of this video, the main things you want to know are the ACA gives you mostly leg, and the MCA gives you arm and face. And remember, it's going to be on the opposite side, the contralateral side of the stroke that you're going to have symptoms in the body. So this video let us take a look at the way to localize strokes based on the symptoms that you see, you can localize it to, it to where it is, you know, cortex, brainstem, cerebellum, even to which artery that it's in, if we know enough about the circle of Willis. In the next video, we're going to go over the evaluation of your stroke patients. So I'll see you there. Thanks for watching.